Hi everybody, Bastian is back and today we're going to continue our chess lectures with the Damiano defense. Now, unfortunately, I suffered a hard disk uh, crash, meaning that the game I was planning to annotate, the Damiano at club level, is now forever lost. But fortunately, I still have a game against an international master where I played the Damiano defense. So, game starts with e4, an immediate f6, knight to f3, and e5. And now, by transposition, we have arrived at the Damiano defense. Now, the point of the f6 move is to protect the e5 pawn, but this defense is an illusion because black white can simply play knight takes pawn on e5, and it is not possible for um, black to recapture the knight. Uh, the reason why has been explained many times before, so if you're unfamiliar with the Damiano defense, I will just post a link to um, another channel where um, this is explained. Basically, we get the queen move that um, threatens our king on e8. And that's the main danger and the main flaw in the Daniano defense. And that's why white um, can permit himself to take on the pawn on e5 without being recaptured. I continue with queen to e7. And now there are a few possibilities. White may try to retreat the knight to f3, which is good, and is mostly played. After which, queen takes pawn, check. We see that the knight is protected. Will result in perhaps bishop to e2. Uh, white is ready to castle, and he can bring out his second knight with tempo attacking the queen. Alternatively, black may try d5, putting more pressure on the pawn. Now white cannot recapture this pawn immediately. So white may now try d3, after which pawn takes, pawn recaptures, queen takes pawn check. May lead to bishop to e2 to um, block that check, getting ready to castle. After which black may try bishop to f5, creating a battery on uh, the c2 pawn, which is quite interesting. Um, white may try c3 to save that pawn, or knight to c3, and then perhaps the pawn is lost. However, this wasn't played. So let's go back to the game. Queen to e7. And white retreats to c4, a much more aggressive position for the knight, dominating the center. And there is no clear way for um, black to um, threaten this knight. Now, black may try. Queen takes pawn, check, attacking the knight. But this will simply lead to the knight retreating to e3. And we can see that after c3, uh, white gains tempo attacking the queen. And white has a much better position. And black has a weakness uh, against his king. Alternatively, d5 can be played, creating a fork. But this will lead to queen to h5 check, perhaps g6 to block. And we can see that now this pawn is unprotected. Queen takes pawn. And now black has a lot of issues developing his pieces. Not only is his king unsafe, um, castling kingside is weak because all the pawns have moved. Castling queenside is impossible with the queen controlling uh, the half open file. This knight cannot develop. This rook cannot develop. This bishop may fiance chateau but cannot develop properly to um, counter a queen threat. This bishop cannot move, or um, white can take the pawn on uh, b7. So black is forced to continue with knight to c6, and then perhaps later play bishop to e6. So this is not a good continuation for black at all. None of this was played. 
So after um, White takes on the pawn on e5, Queen to e7, White retreats to c4. I play b5 instead. A bit of a Polish opening with the possibility to transfer the bishop um, to b7. Now it is still possible for uh, White to play Queen to h5 check. Now threatening the pawn on b5. So make no mistake, this is a gamut that I'm playing. After g6, and queen takes pawn, the advantage uh, of the b5 move compared to the d5 um, pawn move is that black can still take control of the center and lock out this queen of the game. So after queen takes pawn on b5, I can play c6, threatening the queen, forcing the queen back perhaps to b3, and now d5, threatening this pawn and the knight. Knight to e3, d4, attacking the knight once again, knight to c4, and now queen takes a pawn check, forcing bishop to e2. And queen can take the pawn on uh, g2, preventing that option. So there are definitely some advantages to um, a b5 move compared to a d5 move. So let's go back to the game. b5 was played. And white decides not to try the queen move with check and instead retreats the knight to e3. So that's always a possibility. Now we can see that um, I can take on the pawn on e4, but now a new target has become available, and that is my b5 pawn. And white should no longer worry for a, a check after queen takes pawn because this knight is blocking. So now what? I continue with b4, protecting my pawn and preventing the development of white's knight. And there are a few possibilities for white to continue at this point. White can play d3, protecting his pawn on e4, and having a one pawn advantage in the game. However, this locks out his bishop on f3. It's a good move, but this is not what was played. Why tries bishop to c4 instead? Um, developing his bishop before locking him out with a pawn move pawn to d3. And now the game continues with well let's say if queen to queen takes pawn at this point is played, threatening the bishop. White has the possibility to play bishop to d5, protected by the knight for king, queen, and rook. So, black must be very careful to proceed now. Um, this pawn seems unprotected, because d3 wasn't played, but it's actually a trap. And white gets in some free development. Bishop to a6 was played instead, because I need to get rid of this bishop first, before I'm um, getting this pawn. So, White takes home my knight in an exchange, a recapture with the rook, and we can now see that I have an additional weakness, and that's the pawn on h7. And this is some very nice development by white. He now plays queen to h5, um, delayed, but at uh, the perfect time, check, and can now attack another pawn on h7. I play queen to f7 to block. And white grabs the pawn. So this queen is also also protecting the pawn on uh, e4, which is not even on her attack for the moment. But we can see that white has a lot of possibility to play queen to f5 and retreat if needed. So at this point, I have lost two pawns, and this pawn uh, is unprotected and overextended. 
I continue with normal development knight to c6, d3, protecting the pawn. So there's no longer an option for me to uh, recapture. I castle queen side, knight to d2, the only possible way to um, develop the knight. And bishop to c5. White plays knight to b3. This move is played, so well, this knight is under attack and I'm threatening to um, double the pawns. But with knight to b3, we can see that oh, we can see that this knight is now attacking this bishop, so he's forced to retreat, and this bishop is now protecting the knight on e3, so there's no longer a risk on doubling the pawns. This bishop is uh, unprotected, so it needs to retreat. I play the in-between move, rook to h8, chasing away the queen, but there's plenty of room and possibility for the queen to retreat to. Queen to f5, now there's a dual attack on my bishop on c5, forcing bishop to b6. And if you look now, white has the perfect development. Um, all his pawns are protected. He can castle either kingside or queenside. And he has a two-pawn advantage. So it looks like I'm not going to win this game. White has the possibility to castle kingside. Instead, he continues development. And plays knight to d5, threatening my pawn on b4, which is currently protected by the knight, and also threatening my bishop on b6. So uh, white obviously wants my bishop pair and wants to trade off my attacking piece, uh, which is normal to do since he has a material advantage. So at this point, it is difficult for me to continue. So I need to close my eyes and think for a while, uh, what am I going to do now? Chasing the queen, that's right. We've all seen me chasing the queen before. However, um, at this point, it is not very obvious to do so because the queen has a lot of possibility to retreat. So I continue with sacrificing yet another pawn. I play knight to e5. Now, white may choose to attack either the bishop or um, attack my pawn, gain a pawn advantage, and attack my bishop on a6. I'm playing knight to e5 in order to take away a square of the queen, which is f3, now covered by the knight. Knight takes pawn, attacking my bishop on b6, bishop to b7, saving the bishop. And now, it is difficult for white to continue. If a random move is played, let's say a3, we can see that white is in a lot of trouble already. After rook to h5, there is only one square available for the queen. I'm going to start highlighting um, the squares the queen can move to, because this queen hunt is uh, not very obvious. Queen to f4 is forced. Rook to g5, attacking the pawn on g2. And now there are a few possibilities. Let's say g3 will not work. Because we can play rook to g4, only two squares available for the queen to move to. Queen to f5, for instance, will lead to g6, and the queen is lost. So that's not a real escape square for the queen. Queen to d2 looks very safe. But now I can play knight to f3 check, uh, for king, king and queen. And the knight can no longer be recaptured because white has played g3, making a hole on the f3 square. So let's go back. 
of the rook to g5, if not g3, let's say a random move, say a4, we can crash through with rook takes pawn on g2, threatening uh, rook takes f2 or uh, bishop takes f2. So if now rook to f1 to protect, I can attack the queen once again. Queen to f5, g6, same problem. Queen to d2, we lead to knight to f3, check for king, king and queen. Let's look at another defense. If not, uh, rook to f1 is played to protect the pawn on f2. Perhaps a random move. I can simply grab the pawn, threatening the queen. There are only two uh, available squares for the queen to move to. Queen to h4. Knight f3 check. Once again a fork. White will lose his queen. Queen to g3. And now we notice that white's queen is no longer protecting the h5 square. So queen to g3 will lead to queen to h5, threatening mate. And white will have a lost game. So let's go back a few moves. Oops. So let's say if the random move was played a3, rook to h5, one escape square, rook to g5. So now we know a random move does not work. We know g3 doesn't work. What if white simply castles? Then black can continue with rook to h8. And we can see that we have a lot of pieces now uh, for our kingside attack. If now d4, for instance, to attack um, the knight, I can play queen to h5, adding even more pressure. a4, a random move, queen takes, queen recaptures, knight f3 check, with a fork, and of course the knight cannot be recaptured. King moves, rook to h2 checkmate. Or let's go back. If not, d4 is played at this point, but queen to d2. Um, retreating to safety. We can play knight to f3. Um, check. Gaining the queen. King to h1 is forced and checkmate. So we can see that at this point we even have choices of capturing the queen after chasing it or um, going outright for the checkmate. So, what if rook to g1 is played? Well, then I can play rook to um, g4. So, we see that there are um, two possibilities. Now, f5 we know does not work after g6. So, queen to d2 is forced. Knight to f3 check, gaining the queen once again. And if pawn takes knight, now this is possible. I can grab a rook instead. Rook takes, check, king to e2. And rook to g2, and I continue and continue the game, gaining another pawn with a clear advantage, with white being a rook down. So none of this was played. That is just to show you the calculations after a random move. Let's continue with the game. So after deciding to chase the queen, knight to e5, sacrificing my pawn on b4. Removing an escape square for the queen on f3. Knight takes pawn. Bishop recaptures. And instead of a random move, white cleverly plays queen to f4 to um, retreat to queen immediately. So now what? I continue with 
queen to e7, threatening the knight on b4 with check, best move by white. And again, there are a few continuations that are possible for white. So if, say, queen to d2 is played now, in order to protect that knight, I can play a5, getting rid of that knight, knight to d5, forced, um, in order to keep that murder piece. Bishop takes, pawn recaptures, and knight to f3. And we can see that, um, once again, in chasing the queen, uh, we have created a royal fork uh, with tempo, with a check, and that uh, the final square that the queen has moved to wasn't safe at all. So, if instead, when I play queen to e7 attacking the knight, if not queen to d2 is played, but bishop to d2, leaving the queen at the position at f4, I can play a5, getting rid of the queen. Only one uh, possible square for the knight to move to. Knight to d5, bishop takes, pawn recaptures, and knight to d3. Um, check. Once again, we can see we can gain the queen. So the queen is not safe staying at its position either. So none of these moves were played, but that goes to show that um, white is in a terrible position with his queen. I play que uh, queen to e7 threatening the knight, and instead of queen to d2 or bishop to d2, a3 is played instead to protect the knight. Not only that, but this pawn also protects against um, possible checks with queen moves. And it provides an escape for uh, the knight on uh, b4 in case I push my pawn. So clearly this is the best move for white to, do, uh, to play. a4, knight retreats. So the knight is also stepping in to protect um, the b4 square for attacks. Because white hasn't castled yet, and this square needs protection, so white is doing a good job. I continue with a4, threatening the knight on b3, and finally this move takes away um, the final square for the queen to retreat to. And that's the main point um, of this attack. Knight to d2 to save the knight, and I'm going to highlight all the squares that the queen can now move to. Um, only g3 and f5 seem available. So I play f5. And this seems like a weird move, but it um, gives a second threat on the g4 square. And it also takes away the f5 square. Because if at this point queen takes pawn is played, I can play rook d to f8. And now white's queen is lost. It has no uh, squares to move to. So if say queen to f3, uh, knight takes check, knight recaptures, bishop takes pawn check, I'm just crashing through. This wasn't played, but just an example. Uh, pawn takes bishop, queen takes check, bishop e3, bishop takes, threatening a pawn on uh, c2. Now if say Pawn takes bishop, queen takes check, king to f1, rook takes check, I can crash through with everything and there's nothing white can do to stop me. Pawn takes, queen takes check, king to um, g1, rook to f8, rook to f1, queen takes uh, checkmate. This is just one example. Um, there are a lot of variations but uh, with the queen down there's uh, no stopping black's mating attack. So, let's go back a few moves. I played f5, and we can see there's only one square um, the queen can retreat to, that's g3, or it can stay at its position uh, on f4. So, if not queen takes pawn is played, what should white play at this point? White may try pawn takes pawn to get rid of that pawn. 
and also block against attacks on the f-file against this queen but now black can play knight takes pawn check crashing crew with a dual check and again we can see that white's queen is lost so staying at the position will simply lead to a lost queen with the uh, matrix so taking the pawn does not work either so we've seen that neither the queen nor the pawn can recapture on f5 and we have taken away another square for the queen to retreat through and we are closing in on the kill on this queen so perhaps white would just castle at this point but then we can play g5 there are um, two moves that white apparently can play to save his queen queen to g3 to lead to f4 and now the queen is lost again so there's no place the queen can retreat to and if queen at this point we again get rook to f8 threatening the queen with no escape square so castling doesn't work so we have now seen that this pawn cannot be recaptured White cannot play moves like castling what else can he try? queen to g3 of course the only green square available but now I can play f4 attacking the queen and there's no place for the queen to retreat to so he must recapture on f4 queen takes rook to um, f8 one place um, for escape for the queen that's queen to g3 queen to g3 and then we get a very nice uh, attack bishop takes pawn check for king king and queen so even at this point we can see that um, white's queen will be lost so let's go none of this was played these are just the sidelines in case in case um, white tries something else we were playing pawn to b5 and the move that was played was knight to f3 so at this point black can play knight takes knight and if white wants to recapture the minor piece he can play either queen takes or pawn takes so if queen takes uh, we get a lot of variations i am not going to show you all of them because there are simply too many but pawn can recapture is the main move uh, after which we attack the queen we attack the pawn with the discovered check it had a possibility to um, bring in the rook on f8 so for instance if queen takes pawn bishop recaptures so that's not possible if queen to e2 we can play rook to f8 rook to f1 to protect perhaps and rook takes pawn which is um, the best variation for white to play although it is losing if not queen takes pawn or queen to e2 and white recaptures with pawn takes pawn i can play rook to f8 continuing with my attacking idea bishop to f4 to block bishop takes pawn and we can already see a, a discovered check if queen goes to um, c3 for instance bishop takes uh, pawn on g2 check and white will lose his rook queen to e5 to block bishop to a5 check so that's very strong for black as well so let's go back if not the queen move is played queen takes knight white may try pawn takes knight instead and this was the move that was played and it's probably the best move although it doubles the pawns i grab the pawn now there are two possibilities to continue if pawn takes pawn which was not played and this looks the most logical because now white can regain his pawn structure i can continue with rook to h4 attacking the queen 
and we can see that there are four squares available for the queen to retreat to if queen to g3 I can play rook takes pawn and crash through pawn takes rook, queen takes check bishop blocks I can take the rook and I can take the second rook and threaten the pawn and the knight on a2 taking advantage of white's lack of development um, my own knight, my own king is um, very well protected at this point alternatively if white does not retreat to um, g3 but chooses d2 I can play rook takes pawn on e4 pawn recaptures queen takes check and we can see the same issue arising for white king to d1 forced more or less queen takes h1 check and another winning position for Final. if queen to f3 is played or to um, f5 it doesn't really matter I can go with rook on f8 queen to e2 and we can see a lot of pressure on the f2 pawn so I can take on the pawn on f2 with the rook threatening the queen on the fleece rook to e4 check uh, pawn takes rook queen takes pawn check queen to e2 queen takes checkmate is also possible but this wasn't played so this structure was not um, played instead white takes pawn takes pawn with uh, the d-pawn so now we can continue to chase the queen with uh, rook to h4 however I play another move aggressively sacrificing my minor piece Bishop takes pawn on f2 check. King recaptures. Rook to f8, threatening the queen. So that's another approach. Queen to e3. Bishop takes pawn, another aggressive attacking move. Now the pawn cannot recapture for the discovered check. And the queen cannot recapture because then I can recapture with my queen. And we still have a discovered check. So there's no recapturing possibility so if queen takes, queen takes if queen to d2 for instance I can crash through with an attack on the rook and the discovered uh, check so if rook to g8 I can play bishop to h1 check and there's only one escape square for um, white's king Queen to f4, of course, is not an option. If king to g3 is played, queen to h4 check is a mate. So that's another nice mate that uh, we can try to achieve. So let's continue with the game. Bishop takes pawn on e4. Queen to d2 doesn't work. Queen takes uh, e4 does not work. Knight to c3 was played. Rook takes um, pawn check with the final attack on the queen, which is now lost. Queen takes, bishop recaptures, king recaptures, rook to f8 check. Now, black still must be very careful because um, he's um, down on material. Uh, he has a queen and a rook, but white still has four pieces. So the game's not over yet. White blocks with bishop to f4. Queen to e5 check, overloading the bishop. Rook to f1, developing his rooks. Rook takes bishop check, king to g2. Rook to h4, threatening the pawn on h2 with check. Rook f8 check, king flees. Rook to h1, protecting that pawn on h2. Queen to g5 check, 
preventing the advance um, king to g3 to attack my rook. Now the king is forced on um, the f file. Queen to c1 uh, check, attacking the pawn on c2 and threatening the rook on h1. So only king to g2 is possible to save that rook. Queen to d2 check, again threatening the pawn on c2. Now white has the possibility to threaten my rook with king to g3. This move was played. Queen to g5 check, uh, protecting my rook. There are two possible escape squares now for um, white's king. That's f3 and f2. King to h3 was played. Rook to h3 check. And now if king to f2 would be played, I can play queen to um, c5 check, forking rook and king. So king to g2, queen takes, king recaptures, queen to f3 check with the final fork and a win for white, uh, for black. This wasn't played. Instead of king to f2, White tries king to e2, so I play queen to g2, check, and threatening the rook on h1 directly. Rook blocks, I take the rook, king to d2, root takes pawn, take take, check, king to c1, and now you're um, approaching the end of the game. I'm going to continue a little bit faster now. Um, there's not much more interesting. Um, I agreed with my opponent that we would play until um, the end. So, queen to f4 check. g5, going to promote. Protecting g3. Take, take. Threatening the pawns. Take, take. And now white can no longer stop my pawns from promoting. Being a real asshole, I promote the two bishops. With opposite side colors. And I proceed, proceed with um, the bishop mate. So I'm not going to explain the bishop mate, otherwise this video will become too long. But I'll give you a link to a, another YouTube video where this is explained, in case you want to learn how to do this. Finally, bishop to f4 is the checkmate. I hope you enjoyed watching this game and it gave you some ideas for your own games. Please leave a comment and have a great evening. White castles, knight b to d7, c3, so you're seeing the Cole Koltanowski here, b6, and this is, with um, a mirror image, uh, the Kolzukertorch system played as black.